Hello, trail travelers. It is Carrie and Katarina. And in this video, we're going to go over our top 10 technical trails of 2021. And we have another video on our top scenic trails that you can find in the link above and in the description. So if you're into more of the scenic, easier trails, check out that video. But if you want the harder, little more difficult trails, this is going to be, be the video to watch. And we had a great year. We had some really fun trails. We were traveling a lot. We did, <laughs> we did a lot. So let's jump right in with our number 10 on our technical list, which is Broken Arrow. Broken Arrow is just outside of Sedona, Arizona. And while this isn't a hard trail, it had some fun obstacles and then combined with just being so different for us in those red rocks, I think this is what helped me put it on this, this list. For me, it was the last uh, descent. Yeah. We made it to the, to the list. Going down those stairs and stuff. Yeah. But as, as you can see, there are, you know, some fun obstacles and in comparison to the other Arizona trails like Table Mesa or um, Schnibbly Hill, it, it did have a higher level of difficulty, but here's the steps that Katarina was talking about. And I mean, this was certainly fun, uh, but you weren't even in the Jeep, you were filming it. But I saw how you were sliding down over there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was pretty slick because it's, it's somewhat similar to the slick rock in Moab, but it's covered in dust. So it made it very, very slippery going down, but uh, it was a tremendous amount of fun. So definitely, if you're in the Sedona area and you want to hit a trail, Broken Arrow definitely should be on your list. I mean, it made our top 10 out of all the many trails that we did this year. Now one trail that wasn't going to be on this list because we hadn't even done it is Miller Rock and we just did this trail at the end of December and this was so much fun. I wish I had known about this trail before but I'd never heard it mentioned on Facebook, I've never heard it mentioned in the groups and yet it's a fantastic trail. It was a recent trail and a little bit even in the comments you read already people said it was more washed out than usual, so it has a difficulty. Yeah, there's some nice rocks to, to climb over. There's um, just a, a good set of obstacles. It's it's kind of like this big X that you go through. There's, there's three different spurs plus the one you come in on, and one of the spurs definitely has this higher level of difficulty, and it's just a ton of fun. You can do some three-wheeling, as you'll see right here. Little Jeep wave, hello. And then you have a major obstacle that's kind of two parts that you have to go down. But the cool thing is, you go out, you go over all these obstacles, you get to the end of that spur, and then you have to turn around and do that spur in the opposite direction. So everything that you do, you have to do twice in two different directions. So uh, I think for those reasons and just the fun level of this trail, is why this trail made it into uh, our top technical trails. It's not super, super hard. In fact, we didn't even scrape anything going over these obstacles, but you do get tippy. There was like a 28 degree roll. There's, you know, about 28, 30 degrees on the, the tip in a couple places. So it's fun and it's challenging, but it's not super hard, but I highly recommend Miller Rock if you've never tried it. And apparently it's a favorite of a lot of locals around here, even though I've never heard of it before. Oh, top of the world. This is definitely a fun trail. And if you just take the main trail up to the top and then turn right around and come back, it's really not that difficult of a trail. But if you go around counterclockwise on the loop at the end, that's where the challenge comes in and it gets a lot more technical. So definitely high up on the technical rating if you go on the back side of that loop. And you get very flexy, you get tippy, you get 
Um, a lot of articulation, you know, there's a, places you have to be really careful of coming down so that you don't come down too quickly. But Top of the World is also on our top 10 scenic trails. So if you like a scenic trail that can also be a technical trail, then you don't want to miss Top of the World. Now, uh, it's about an hour drive outside of Moab. So, it, and it takes a few hours to go up and down, especially if you take this other side that's more difficult. You can count on this being, you know, three, three and a half to four hours on the trail, plus an hour back and forth to Moab. So it can, it can take up a better chunk of the day. But in terms of just fun, action-filled, lots of cool obstacles, it's really hard to beat top of the world. Although, because of some of the obstacles, you really don't want to be too stock going through here. You want to lift and you want some tires to get yourself some ground clearance. But Also, it is Badger Fauna Trail and some of the difficult trails, what you will be mentioning, they also Badger Fauna ah, Trails. So you know, that's a, that's a great point. You have point. to earn it. <laughs> yeah, you do earn this, this, uh, this trail. Uh, Broken Arrow is a badge of honor trail. Top of the World is a badge of honor trail. So some of the things that we've done and are on these lists are Jeep badge of honor trails. And if you don't know what that is, um, maybe I should do a video on explaining what the Jeep badge of honor program is all about. But Top of the World, definitely one of our favorite technical trails. Now, another badge of honor trail that is near Moab, it's about 90 miles south of Moab, is Elephant Hill. Now this one also was on our top 10 scenic trails because it's just a gorgeous area. But in terms of difficulty and technicalness, this is a fun, fun trail. Nothing crazy, nothing dangerous, just fun is the very right word for that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you have all these little rocks, you have these steps, you've got little waterfall things, you've got some, some fun obstacles. Again, it's not gonna be an eight or nine on the difficulty scale, but it's really high on the fun scale. And there's even a section where you have to back up and go to go down the hill, and then you're doing it the opposite. Where to go back up the hill, you have to go up it in reverse because there's no way to make the turn. So it is a very, very fun trail. I think this one should be on anybody's bucket list for sure. And as you get to the end, there's actually a spot where you can stop. There's picnic tables, there's bathrooms. So you can get kind of all the way through it and then take a break, have your lunch and turn around. Now the other thing about Elephant Hill is it's very restricted. Uh, do you remember what it was? I think it's only like 25 vehicles a day. Yeah, it's some very small number. Only like 25 vehicles a day are allowed to go, and you can only go in groups of two, and then those groups are spaced out 30 minutes. So it's, while there may be other people on the trail, you really don't run into other people because it's so limited in how many people are allowed to be on the trail at any time. It was my favorite spot. But this, is, this is a great <laughs> spot. I don't know what it's called. I called it the Narrows. Um, it was really, really tight, but it was a lot of fun. Number six on our top 10 list is Poughkeepsie Gulch. This is down in the San Juan Mountains, uh, along with Engineer Pass and Imogene Pass and Black Bear Pass. But Poughkeepsie is considered one of the more uh, difficult trails out there. And it's really just one area of kind of a playground area with a couple big climbs. And you even did some of it. I did, but not, not the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. It was the wall. Yeah, the wall is, it's a good challenge. We all had no problems making up it, making it up, making up, going up the hill. And after we had all done it a few times, Katarina was like, well, I want to do it. So she hopped in the driver's seat and she got through it and had a lot of fun. So if you're down there and you're doing the trails in the San Juan, you got to do Poughkeepsie Gulch. It's also a badge of honor trail. So 
it's definitely worth hitting up and it's it's just a ton of fun again it's not super hard but it's going to challenge it's going to challenge you a little bit you're going to have to pick some good lines otherwise even the best drivers can get stuck or the most built rigs i should say can get stuck going up some of these obstacles so you just really got to pick good lines and it's, it's a great challenge but it's not going to be a dangerous trail it's not there, there's really very little risk of body damage or rolling or anything like that. It's just you might start spinning and have to back down and try a different line. So that was the first half of our technical trails. Now we're going to get into our top five. And these are all going to be super fun trails. Some of them get harder and harder as we get up to number one, but these are definitely very high on our list. They're ones we hit pretty much every year. We're gonna go hit these trails because we do like them so much and they're so much fun. And the first one is Chinaman Gulch. We've been out there a few times. We've done it in the summer. We've done it in the winter, in the snow. We, we try and get out there a couple times a year because it's, it's one of our favorite trails. And even when we went out during the winter, it was minus 11 degrees, but the sun was so bright on us that we were taking off our jackets and because of the, the warmth of the sun on us. But there are some really good obstacles on this trail. And here it is technical, but nothing dangerous. You cannot roll down like a thousand feet or something. So, yeah. That and is, you've driven through is, some of this. That is the fine line between technical and dangerous. Right. And you've driven through some of this. Yeah. And what do you, I mean, and that was one of your earlier trails that you drove. Yes, you put me and say drive. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you did it in the snow. <laughs> yes. So if she can do it in the snow, you should be able to do it on dry conditions. But it, it is a fun trail. One thing to note. If you've not done this trail before, it does pay to have a good spotter. And a bad spotter on this trail not, won't put you in any danger, but it could- but you can step there. <laughs> you, you could get into a situation that may not be optimal. That's probably a nice, safe way of putting it, right? There is a lot of trees around, so you can winch yourself out. You just have to know what you're doing. That's a great point. There the are first time we were by, by ourselves. And yes, and we had to winch we, up. We one did of them. it. Yeah, um, but a good spotter can be a big lifesaver on this trail to just help you get over some stuff. Okay, we're in the top four right now, and we're heading back to the San Juans and we were there for several days, right? And we hit as many trails as we could during that time. And one, which is why it made the list, is Black Bear Pass, number four on our list. And now I'm gonna have some people disagree on the technical difficulty of this trail, but I, I wanna go back to what we've said before about our list. This list isn't necessarily about how hard something was, but does it provide a technical challenge? And there, I think there's a difference there. And in the case of Black Bear, this combination technical, what plays with your emotions, and then it turns into a dangerous situation. Well, someone put it very well. Uh, they said Black Bear Pass is an easy trail with expert consequences. <laughs> and if you make a mistake, you can get yourself into a world of trouble. People roll down it every year. People flop on the steps every year. So you need to know the lines. You need to know your vehicle and you need to be safe about it. Otherwise, things can go wrong in a very, very big way. So. In that reason, this is high on our technical list, and it's not because it's super hard and you don't need lockers and everything else to get through it. It's really because you can't make any mistakes. The, the margin of error is very, very low. 
And so it's may not be high on the difficulty, but it's high on the risk factor. And yet it's still a lot of fun. And the views are fantastic. Black Bear Pass is also on our top 10 scenic trails. And again, it's a Jeep Badge of Honor trail. So you don't want to miss out on that. Now, our number three trail, this, uh, if you've watched our scenic video, this is also on there for a different reason, but White Rim Trail. Now, we did this over Labor Day weekend, which was immediately after some huge monsoons had come in and did a ton of damage to the trail. And this section here, um, I'm probably gonna get some of the names mixed up. I think this was called Hodgeback, Hodgeback. Hodgeback yeah. Ridge or something. And this is a very, very long uphill climb on very slippery, very rocky surface. And remember, we're pulling our Tough Stuff Overland trailer. So we have an extra about 1,800 pounds on the back of our rig trying to go up this. And the Jeep had no problem whatsoever. But we had a Lexus GX470 in front of us. We thought we had given enough time to make it to the top because you, you can't see. When you're at the bottom, you have no idea how long this is gonna take. And we had given them, I don't know, maybe five minutes. Yeah, but that way took quite a while. And then we finally decided to go ahead and go up. And as you'll see in just a moment, we actually did catch up to them. But check out this trail. I mean, we are going uphill on this very rocky, very slippery surface on a shelf road that just drops like, like crazy. Talk about a shelf road. I mean, you are, you're way up there and it's very, very steep. I mean, looking at from this view, you can't even see down because it's so steep. So. And I wouldn't call this part the worst. Well, this is not the worst. Right around the corner was much worse. This was... <laughs> Where the, the fun starts on I, I, I would say this was the beginning of it, yeah. right? Yeah. From the beginning of the trail to this point was extremely easy. Yeah, I mean, there, there was, was nothing. There was crazy. a few fun little, and I mean little obstacles, you know, like no. one foot drops, stuff like that. But getting up here, this, we're starting to think, wow. And we had several rangers tell us like, wait, you're gonna try and go up there with a trailer? And we're like, well, yeah. And they're like, yeah, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> At that point, we had no other choice. Yeah, we couldn't turn we around. Did, we didn't have gas to go back. We just had to. <laughs> I would highly recommend watching our White Rim Trail video because as we were at this point, we're past the, uh, the point of no return. We cannot turn around. We do not have enough gas. So we have to continue because it's the shortest way through. So there is no choice but to continue. Now coming down off the same ridge, this is completely washed out. There are spots where the tires are right on the edge of the cliff. Boy above. <laughs> it, was, it was sketchy, totally sketchy going down this. And you see the people at the top you, you know things are probably not going your way when a crowd gathers and everyone has their cameras out. <laughs> I couldn't even stand there with camera because it was all those rocks are falling down out from your feet and everything. Yeah, and there's a good view of our trailer. Uh, the Tough Stuff Overland Base Camp did an amazing job on this trail. Then as we get Closer to the end, uh, this is almost at the end of the day, we're tired, we're, we can see our campsite straight down below us. We get into this section, which, okay, I'm gonna admit it. I was sketched out. <laughs> I, was, I was a little sketchy on this because 
the Jeep is tilting like crazy. I got the trailer tilting in different directions. Tires must, are dropping I down into sure holes. I was sure a million times that the trailer will flip over. I, or, or flip over even over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was paying attention to the roll angle, so I knew it wasn't bad. But when you're going down something like this and you're watching those angles just go 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, and you're just like, when is it going to stop? When am I going to start coming up and get out of this? And so having um, you know someone with you like Katarina start telling me, okay, you're your pass, your driver tires start going kind to of start coming up now. It gives you a, a big sense of um, confidence to go through something like this and not get completely sketched out. But now the Jeep's through it, and I got to get the trailer through it. And this is the first time taking the trailer on a trail of this difficulty. So I don't really know how it's going to react with the the tent weight being on top. And it did fantastic. So. Very, very well-deserved White Room Trail making the top of our list. Now another, well, okay. We're getting into our top two. And number two is Holy Cross. This is a super fun trail. It's got a good mix of difficult obstacles and a lot of fun stuff. Let's get into the video and see what Holy Cross is all about. So you're going to start off with kind of this gatekeeper of an obstacle here. A lot of people just struggle getting up this because it's fairly big jump to get up. But we've done it a few times, so kind of know what we're doing. We were able to get through it. You get to go through French Creek, and at the time that we ran it, the the river was pretty low, which was kind of a bummer. It's really fun when there's like a foot or foot and a half of water in there because you can't see what's underneath. And then the, the rocks get really slickery, up, uh, slickery, slippery. <laughs> but there's big rocks you have to go over, some big obstacles you have to climb, a uh, lot of little sections uh, like this that are going to test you and your vehicle in terms of your technical skill. Again, not a dangerous trail. Not something that, you know, there's a big risk of fall, you know, flipping your vehicle over or falling off a cliff. But there are a few spots that if you're not careful, you can probably take some body damage. Yeah, I mean, we even had one person who almost drove off the side in a very steep area. And it all it takes is a simple mistake. And you could get into some trouble in a couple spots. But for the most part, it's not a dangerous trail. It's just a lot of fun. We have hit our number one on our top technical trails list. And this is Spring Creek. And I will say that all of the damage on the Jeep has happened at Spring Creek at one point or another. We've got damage to rock sliders. We've got damage to our muffler. We, I've, I've busted up my uh, original uh, rear bumper on there. So anything that there is damage on the Jeep has come from Spring Creek. Let's take a look. Now this year, we did Spring Creek twice. I think you did it three times. I mean, yeah, I think two, I two times one way back way and then the third time together. Right. And this time that you're seeing here is actually a night run. So in conjunction with Baja Designs and the Edge Automotive, we organized a night run on Spring Creek, which I thought was probably a really dumb idea. <laughs> and at everybody this point, loved it. Everybody <laughs> loved it. And when we're on the wall, it was still light enough. Uh, so it wasn't a big problem getting everybody up and over the wall. But the very first obstacle, right at the beginning of the trail, this will stop people in their tracks. They will turn around, they can't make it up there, or they end up winching up or something. But if you can't make it up here, you probably should be turning around because the other two major obstacles on the trail are actually more difficult than this. And 
This is a dangerous trail. Right there on that cliff, if you do it wrong, you can flip your Jeep over. So it happens every year, people flop over and do some damage. Here in the rock garden, our friend Chris got stuck and I had to yank him back. And digging through that boulder uh, pile in the night, uh, had I not just put on new Baja Designs LP4s, I just wouldn't have had enough light to see. And so if you're gonna do a trail like this at night, you need good lights. You probably need rock lights so you can really see what's underneath the tires. So that was our top 10 technical trails of 2021. Yeah, it's looking for even more challenge next year. <laughs> we are looking forward for more challenge in 2022. Um, some of the places that I wanna go hit would be down in Sand Hollow. There's some amazing trails down there. We wanna get back to Moab and do some of the other trails there like Pritchett Canyon. And um, I really wanna take a trip, you know, a multi-day trip and go back to White Rim Trail. So much fun. Yeah. So thanks for watching everybody. This has been our top 10 technical trails of 2021. It's been an amazing year. Yes. Did you enjoy all of it? Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> Why would not be here? Yeah. Uh, and we're really looking forward to 2022. We already have a bunch of stuff planned. But if you know of some really cool scenic or technical trails that we haven't highlighted in these videos, let us know. We're always looking for new adventures. So if you have something you'd like to share with us, please let us know in the comments. And we honestly want to thank you for being a subscriber, for watching the videos, for liking them, for commenting on them. It, it just tells us what you like to see and we really, really appreciate it. We just enjoy doing them and making the videos because we enjoy doing it. But when you let us know that you really like something, it really means a lot to us. So thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll see you on the trails. Bye-bye.